Application programming interface, also known as API, is a way for two computers to talk to each other. It is similar to using a website like flight booking or any other website with many features. Instead of directly accessing the service from the website, you choose to write a code to request data from a server. For example, either you can go to make my trip to access the flights or you can use the API to request the raw JSON data just like this one. Nowadays most of the APIs are restful, meaning they follow a set of rules also known as representational state transfer. REST also has 6 guiding constraints which must be satisfied if an interface needs to be referred to as RESTful. A REST API should be entered with no prior knowledge beyond the initial URI and set of standard media types along with the appropriate payload. A client can request data from a resource by making an API call. In this case, the API is basically an endpoint that is used by the client over HTTP. The request from the client looks like this. It has various sections. The topmost section tells the verb of the HTTP request. You can also think of this as the request method. There are other methods too, like get, put, post, and delete to define your intent. There are other methods too. The next section is the URI. This is the main method that will serve your request. We will see how we can create one and how does this work later in this video. Next is the header section which contains metadata for our request like telling the server what kind of data we will need like JSON. Authorization provides a way to make your API secure. The next part is the body of the request. This part is also known as the payload which is nothing but custom data passed with the API which is required by the method to fulfill your request. You can think of this as a parameter passing to a function. Once this request is processed, response is returned as a result of the API call, which is also helpful for debugging. On top, you will find the status code and then the body which will contain the raw data which you can use in your applications. The status code tells us more about a response. At 200 level, it tells us all went well. At 400 level, it means something was wrong with your payload or your request API. At 500, it means that the server broke or failed to fulfill your request and the issue is at the backend. Now we have seen what is an API and what are the different components of an API. Now let's start with how can someone create their own APIs or how can you create and host your own APIs. This tutorial is going to be in the most popular framework for building RESTful APIs in Node.js, that is Express.js. In the next few minutes, we will learn to build a simple REST API with common methods. We will learn what is a middleware and how does an API work. So the first step is to install Node.js. I am using Node.js 16.9 version for this video. npm init-y will create a project for us and initialize it with a package.json file. Package.json stores the information about the packages which we are going to use in our project. This is a very important file as it defines all the dependencies. Now the next important thing is to install the express package. npm install express. This has installed the express in our module and then we can see in the dependencies section that express 4.17 is installed. So now let's create a file and continue with our coding. So the first thing is we have to import the node express package. We will assign this to a variable called app which will represent the actual API we are building. Next we will define the port on which we require our API to serve. I will use the HTTP port for this demo that is 8080. Then we can start serving our API files by app.listen. We can pass two parameters, first the port on which it will serve and the second is the callback function to let us know when the API is ready. We haven't created any methods yet but let's start the server and see how it looks like. For this, simply go to the terminal and hit node period to start the service. This gives us our output that the server is ready. Now let's see how this looks if we open this in our browser. It shows cannot get which is expected as we haven't defined any methods yet. With methods, I mean get, pull, post, those methods. Now if we go to the developer section of the browser and see the network tab, 
So this has written a 404 status code. Now let's define few methods and see how it looks like. If you want to set up a get method, you can do so by app.get method. This will automatically set up our server with that endpoint and then this is our duty to handle that request. One can handle the request by passing a callback function as the second argument. By default, every method has two objects. Yes, you have guessed it right, request and response object. The request is the payload request which we receive when a client tries to hit the API and the response is the object which we will return in response to the request. This is the method that will serve the client whenever they try to call this get API endpoint. In response, we can also set the status code and a JSON object which it will send back to the client. Now let's restart the server and check this API. So now instead of hitting the endpoint in the browser, I will use the postman to demonstrate further. Browser is not the best tool to develop and test the API, whereas postman gives a much better interface to call and test our APIs. There are other tools like Insomnia and Visual Code extensions too, but for this video I will use Postman. In Postman we will set the verb to get and pass our endpoint to get the details and just after hitting the API we get our JSON object in response with a status code of 200. Now let's go back to our code and try to create one more method and this time we will create a post method. We use the post method when we try to create new data on the server. In this post method URI, we will pass a dynamic ID as there can be a lot of assignments data present on this API server and a dynamic URL allows us to handle all of them from a single function. You can think of this as a common function with dynamic parameters. In this case, to create new data for assignment, we will need the ID, which we can get from the URL as a parameter and an assignment that can be passed along with the payload and we can access it from the body of the request. This means the request object of express allows us to access information from the request message like the URL parameters, the body, the headers, etc and then this can be stored in a database. In the next line, we can check for the required parameters like the assignment, if the assignment is present in the body or not as this is our prime requirement to create new data. If we do not find the assignment data that we can send back to the error response status, along with the message or else if everything is good we can create the data and return the response. Reading and writing data to a database is out of the scope for this video but you got the gist. Since we have written our method let's try it out. But there is one more issue express doesn't pass json by default. Not everybody uses express to write their apis so this is not the default behavior. We can check this by restarting our server and hitting the POST API. So we will change the verb to POST and update our URI to pass a ID. And in the body of the request, we will select JSON and pass our payload, which is the assignment. Let's send this API and see what it returns. So it returns an error. So to solve this we need to use something called middleware. In this case we need to pass the JSON body before the actual data hits our function. For this we will refactor our code a little bit to use a middleware. Express itself provides a middleware to use in these kinds of scenarios. We will define the variable app to express and use the middleware by writing app.use express.json and convert the payload to json for actual use by our functions. So let's save and restart our server to check this. We will go back to the postman and hit the same request. This time we will get a successful response. 
as you can see we get the status code as 200 and we get our response in our body with the assignment with due date and id of 11 is created we can also check the condition which we have put to check for the assignment by not passing the assignment in the payload if we send this we will get 408 i am a teapot error and we get a message like mess assignment is required Awesome, now you know how you can create your own APIs and test them. Before wrap up, please like, share and subscribe to my channel. For any doubts, shoot them in the comment section below. To watch behind the scenes, follow me on Instagram and Twitter. I hope you have learned something from this video. I will see you in the next video next week. Till then, stay safe and keep learning.